Hi everyone, I'm Alfred. I'm a UI UX designer here in Toronto. And today I'll be showing you my first UI UX design portfolio that helped me land a job in the field. I started doing this portfolio back in 2019, which is the time that I graduated in college. And after that, I've been applying to a few jobs. But when 2020 arrived, the pandemic happened. <laughs> so I had to stop applying for a few months. But luckily, by the end of 2020, I managed to land a full-time job in UI UX design using this portfolio. I think this is also going to be helpful for designers who are still in school because the two case studies I'll be showing you today are both concept work back in my time in college. And yeah, I know it's really hard to build your own portfolio for the first time, so I wanted to show you that it's really possible to land a job even if you don't have a lot of experience and most of your portfolio pieces are just from school. So when I was creating my first portfolio, I post all of my work at Behance. So when I was planning to do my portfolio website, I decided to use Adobe Portfolio because you could link your project from Behance to it. Now there are more ways now where you can build your website. You can use sites like Wix and Webflow, but during that time, I think I was just looking for something that works that would help me to apply faster. So that's why I use Adobe Portfolio because they have uh, ready-made templates that's made for portfolio building right away. I think the downside of Adobe Portfolio for me is that it's hard to make your designs more responsive because you're very limited by the templates they provide. And now let's dive into the actual portfolio. So you see, when I was building this website, I didn't want it to be complicated, so I just stick to the basics and do something simple. So I basically have three pages. We have the projects page here, which is the page you're seeing now, a short about page, and a contact page. Then for my opening statement here, I just use the Filipino word Mabuhay and a few Tagalog words here just to make it more personalized and a short description of who I am as a designer. So as you notice, during this time, I only put designer because I'm not really sure what kind of designer I want it to be. And you will notice that on my projects as well. As you can see, I have a few projects here and they're a bit mixed up. So some of them are in UI UX design like this travel app here. There's web design, like this tourism website. So there's a branding design for Toho Coffee. And there's also, I did some poster design and branding for a concept for Pride. Yeah, as you can see, all of my projects are all mixed up because during this time, as I said, I wasn't really sure what type of designer I wanna be. So when I was applying for jobs, I was just trying to throw a big net and see what I can catch. And that really worked for a while because I was getting a lot of interviews, but most of them, I feel like they weren't a fit for me. So during the pandemic, when I had time to think about it, I was really interested in UI UX design. So I started to put more focus on projects related to that. So as you can see here, that's why I put the two UI UX design projects on top, which is the Alpas and the Plate Plants. And I'll be showing these two projects to you today. The first case study I'm going to show you is Alpas, which is a travel planning app I did for my UI UX design class. The main goal for this app was to create and find itineraries that you could share with your friends and family. And as for the name, Alpas is actually a Tagalog word, which means to break free or to break loose, which I found to be very appropriate because these are just some of the words we associate with traveling. And moving down, here are presented the steps I took in terms of researching the app. Um, this is just to back up my assumptions and to find out if this app is actually worth looking into. So initially I did surveys and interviews and, and these are mostly just my classmates and friends. The categories that I'm looking for in terms of the respondents is either they're going on a trip or they just finish a trip. And they also have to be a part of our target audience, which is the millennials. And based on those interviews and surveys, I created two personas, highlighting their motivations and pain points and just to give a better understanding of the users of the app. So here, as I said, you can see a short bio of them, their motivations to travel, uh, their pain points, and just for fun, also their most memorable trips. So I did two of those. And then lastly, I did a competitive analysis where I actually tried using different apps that are quite the same as Alpas, and just to figure out what works and what's not working. And I also look into their user comments just to have a better idea of what's better for my app. After that, I created the user flow, and this will just show the journey of the user from opening the app to creating their own itineraries here. 
And going down here, I'm just showing my wireframes just to give the hiring manager some of the exploration I did when I was designing this app. And before I actually put pictures and some skin on these wireframes, I did some sort of branding of the product. And as you can see here, the logo I have is inspired by the wings of a bird because I associate uh, travel with the idea of flying. And then I combined that with the timeline design of the app. Then after that, I chose colors and typography that would be appropriate for the app. And just looking at the colors I chose right now, I think that most of them are not the right contrast, especially when you pair them with white. For example, the purple here. Uh, the text is going to be hard to read for some users already. I mean, even for me. So I would change that if I'm going to do this again. And after that short branding exercise, I proceed to the mockups. And the first two screens I'm showing here are the two main screens of the app. So you have the trip view and edit view. Again, just looking at it right now, there's just a lot of information right away. And as I mentioned earlier, the colors do not have enough contrast in it. So it's going to be hard to read, especially when there's a lot of information right away. So the trip view, which is the one on the left, shows the itinerary that they have planned and they can be, and those can be divided by sections here just to give the users more options on customizing their itineraries. And if users want to edit uh, their itineraries, they can go to the edit view here. Uh, for this feature, I took inspiration from Spotify, where when you're editing your uh, playlist, you can just drag and drop around and you can already rearrange the songs in your playlist. So that's what I had in mind here. And to highlight the main features of this screen, I made the rest grayscale and highlight the important features by using a different color, which is blue here. The next page here is the attraction page. This is basically a profile of a specific place. So for example, here for the Philippines, when you look at their page, you can see the popular trips, the famous cities, the famous attraction. And of course, lastly, we're showing the trips that other users created. So maybe that will also help you in planning your trips. So here the users can see the actual route of some specific trips. And it also makes suggestions based on what's nearby, like for example, nearby attractions and nearby eats. And if you decide to choose one of those recommendations, you can also add it to your actual um, itinerary. And here I'm just showing mockups that explains that functionality in more detail. And that is it for my first case study. And the second case study I'm going to be showing you is an app called Place Plans. Again, this is a project I did for my UI UX design class. And the visual design for this project actually caught the attention of my professor. So after graduating college, she took me in at her agency for a UI UX design um, internship. And just for some more background, Plate Plants is a recipe app that provides an efficient way of preparing meals and grocery lists for the family. So we started this project by creating personas and we created them using our target audience, which is the millennial mom who wants to have that work and life balance and the food bloggers who we encourage to share the recipes on the app. So from these three personas, we chose one persona, which is Vanessa. And from her story, uh, based on her bio goals and frustrations, we created the storyboard. So the goal for this storyboard was to think of a scenario where we think the app will be useful for the user, which is Vanessa. And looking at this now, I'm not really sure if this is a realistic situation. <laughs> and from that storyboard, I created a user flow. Again, from the moment Vanessa opens the app, to the time she wants to share a recipe with, his, with her husband. And based on the steps on the user flow that I created, I just started exploring on the designs of the pages through wireframing here. And now we go to the actual designs. So the first one I'm showing here is the onboarding process. So when the users first uh, created an account for the app, we asked them a few questions here, just to make the recipes that we're showing them more customized to what they want. So here we have the homepage, and based on the answers of the user on the onboarding process, this list will be customized for the user depending on what they want. And then there's the explore page, and to help users narrow down some of the categories of the recipes, and we have some suggested categories here. And here the user has also has their profile page, where they can see recipes that were shared with them. And now we go to the actual recipe page, where you can see the actual recipes here and more information about the dish. There's also, there's also sections where we're trying to suggest more recipes to you. So we have the related recipes here. And here we have some info again about the dish that you're trying to cook. And if I want to improve this, I think I wanted to include icons here just to make it less wordy and more appealing to the user. Again, I need to work on my color contrast here. This is going to be hard to read, especially with the pink on the white background. 
And then for the instructions, I created the designs to make it look like you're doing it step by step so it's easier to follow. Now you move on to the two features of the app, the My Recipes and My Meal Plans. So My Recipes is the recipes that you'd like and save on your profile. And then if you want to get organized, for example, you want to plan your whole meal for the week, you can create a My Meal Plan. And now we go back to the storyboard that we have where Vanessa was, <laughs> where Vanessa was sharing her recipe with her husband. And here we're just showing how will that work on the app. So we're doing it step by step. So this is the meal plan of Vanessa. She, she chose beef steak, which is the recipe she's trying to cook for that day. Once she chooses that, there's an option to share, to share it with other users. In this case, she wants to share it with her husband, which is Justin. So she chooses the profile of her husband here. And then once she shares it to Justin, it will appear on Justin's profile here and give him a notification. And that was it for this project. So that was a lot, and it was really good to look back at what type of work I was doing back then. In terms of visual design, I think most of the changes I will do is based on the color contrast of the text, because some of them are really small and hard to read. Yeah, so when you're working on app, make sure you have enough contrast on your text, and you can use this website to double check, and I find that really helpful when I'm designing an app. And in terms of the actual case study, I think I presented a lot of good design there, but most of the time I just find it's too much. If I were to redo this again, I think for each case study, I will focus on just one feature instead of trying to design the whole app. And also you get the chance to share more of your thinking once you dive in deeper in just one specific feature. So for example, if I'm working on the Plate Plants app, instead of showing all these screens about the recipes, the mild meal plants, I think it will be best if I just focus on the actual feature of sharing a recipe because I've already talked about it on my personas, my storyboard, my user flow, and I think that will make the case study more focused instead of me just trying to put more screens on the page. And once I've narrowed down the scope of the case study to one feature, it's also easier for me to think of the goals instead of just being all over the place. I think one of the major things that the case studies are missing is the actual goals that I'm trying to set for the project, and maybe at the end, a short retrospective of what is the impact of the app. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're looking for more design videos like this, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Thank you.